Welcome everybody to the most accurate mock draft you are going to see this year that is guaranteed. Now I'm personally a huge fan of mock drafts. You know when Mike Mayock was still doing them, guys like that Mel Kuyper who spend all of their year basically you know just studying this and basically know who every single player is that could be drafted at any point at any round. Love those mock drafts. People who literally don't know any of that and just basically are throwing garbage opinions about. Love that too. There's just there's just so many opinions and I want to eat them all up. They are great and we value your contributions greatly. So now, I don't want to, you know, put all of these people out of a job, but here is my mock draft of the 2019 NFL draft. And I'm just a, a forewarning. It's going to be a bit of a spoiler here. If you want to be excited on draft night and see who goes in the first round, don't watch this video because it is full of spoilers. I will absolutely get it right who is drafted. And there's also going to be no trades in the first round, by the way. But before we move on, everybody, Rob Gronkowski is sad because this channel doesn't have 69,000 subscribers. Help us make Rob Gronkowski happy again and get this channel to 69,000 subscribers. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into this. Now, of course, pick number one is going to the Arizona Cardinals and... I think I agree with all of the really smart people I've been seeing that say that it should be drafting a quarterback. They're absolutely right. A quarterback is what the Arizona Cardinals need. And quarterback Gardner Minshew is who they will take with that first overall pick. He is, of course, my highest rated quarterback in this draft. And I do believe 100% he will be the first overall player to go. So next up, the San Francisco 49ers. Now, it's been a little while since they've drafted a defensive end every year in the first round. So... I think it's about time they get back to that by taking Nick Bosa. Then we have the Jets. Now, plenty of holes on the Jets, but I miss the good old days where the Jets were full of first rounders in the defensive tackle position. And therefore, I believe they have no choice but to take Rashan Gary. It's the only thing that makes sense here. And then we come to the first Oakland Raiders pick at number four. And we've been seeing a bit of a trend here with the Raiders. Of course, bringing in John Gruden and then bringing in Mike Mayock. They have made it clear what they want to do. They want to bring guys out of retirement, and I think Kurt Warner is a great option for them at quarterback. There's been rumblings about them maybe not being so happy with Carr. Kurt Warner, I think, here is a great option. Now, you may be thinking, Oh, you know, you're stupid. You can't draft Kurt Warner. He's already played in the NFL. Well, Kurt Warner was undrafted, therefore you can draft him. He's never been drafted. That's a rule. Go look it up if you want. So now we've seen two quarterbacks go off the board already and then come the Buccaneers. And now the Buccaneers last year, they need to stop all of this rubbish with switching between two quarterbacks. And they need to start switching between three quarterbacks. Then the opposition really doesn't know what's coming. Kyler Murray still here available and I think the Buccaneers will take him. Then at the number six pick, the Giants. Now they've been building the team up pretty well and you know, guys like Odell Beckham Jr. and Saquon Barkley, it's clear what they want to do. They want to wait until a quarterback magically falls into their lap and so they will continue drafting skill position players and I think they will take Marquise Brown. And on the topic of waiting for useful quarterbacks to magically fall into your lap, the next pick are the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now what will they do with their seventh overall pick, you know, they know they've got a whole uh, quarterback and apparently they'll be going for Nick Foles. Nick Foles, of course, the long-term answer, so why not just take Hawkinson, you know, build up that team, skill position players everywhere and eventually someone will be able to throw the ball to them. Then we have the Lions and now, of course, the Lions, the GM comes from the Patriots, the head coach comes from the Patriots, but they're missing that Patriots style on the Lions. And Sean Payton said Trace McSorley reminds him of Julian Edelman, so the Lions will take Trace McSorley and turn him into Julian Edelman. And then we have the Bills, and I got lazy on this one. Yeah, they probably need receivers that can actually catch the ball. But I thought, why not Quinn and Williams? Because what do the Bills need? A nose tackle out of Alabama that they can just get rid of at some point and set back their defense a couple of years. And now onto the Broncos, and there's still a few good quarterbacks available. Joe Flacco, of course, is not a long-term answer, if he's even an answer at all. And therefore, of course, John Elway will look to reinforce the defense because if he ever happens to draft a really good quarterback, he may take over from his legacy and he doesn't want that happening. And then we came on to the Bengals and there's just something about teams that begin with the letter B in my mock draft. I, I just don't care. The Bills are boring, the Bengals are boring and the Bengals, they take an offensive tackle. I don't know. I just It's really 
What, what have I got to say? But then the Packers. Now, of course, everyone knows how it works in Green Bay. They don't ever spend up to the cap, but spend a lot of money on Aaron Rodgers, which essentially holds them hostage to him. And whoever he says they're allowed to draft, they will draft. And I think they will take Josh Allen. Now, this one's actually, they probably should be going for an edge rusher. It's probably a bit more realistic than I meant it to be. I don't... Then come the Dolphins, and they've got plenty of problems, least of all the cap space. So they need to get rid of Ryan Tannehill. And I think Tyree Jackson, who in my evaluation got three and a half experts out of five will be a great fit for them. Then we have the Falcons and now the Falcons kind of figured out a little secret to success last year. You gotta pick up receivers out of Alabama. Now they've got their receivers pretty set up so why not take a tight end out of Alabama? That's what the Falcons will do. Watch this space. On to the Redskins who definitely need help on the offensive line. They went through about seven starting guards if not more last season but really that's completely irrelevant because they'll just take whoever the best available Alabama player is. After them the Panthers have a chance to fix some of the issues they've got but I you know miss the good old days when they just drafted defensive tackles every single year and that's why I see them taking Christian Wilkins why not you know just reinforce that middle and maybe the rest will figure itself out you've tried getting weapons to Cam Newton but you actually just got worse last year so why not try something different and then we have the Cleveland Browns who have been doing some good business in recent drafts and of course it's John Dorsey's second year in charge and we know what John Dorsey likes. Therefore, I think they will pick Chris Brown. Now, John Dorsey loves a good old woman beater on his team. But more importantly, his name is also Brown and that's the team's name. Now, moving on to the Vikings, who, of course, love to throw the ball and don't see any problem with that. I think they will take a man who can make Khalil Mack look out of shape in DK Metcalf. Why not give Kirk Cousins more weapons than he can throw to for the first three quarters of the game? On to the Titans, who have one big need this offseason. They need need a running back that they can start ahead of Derrick Henry for most of the season. And I think Josh Jacobs could be perfect for that role. Now the Steelers have one big problem this offseason and that is the fact they're going to be left with a whole bunch of brown jerseys that they're unable to sell and I think they can perfectly fix that problem by drafting AJ Brown. Unfortunately for the Seahawks there's no Griffin brothers to draft this year and there's nobody else with the name Griffin either so I think they'll go for their second preferred option and that is to take a feel-good story. One of the premier feel-good stories this season of course is Dakota Allen and I think that's the way they'll go. Now the Ravens have proven in recent years that their philosophy is strong on one fundamental core and that is you can never have enough running backs. That's why they've got one starting at quarterback. So I think it only makes sense for them to pick up Devin Singletary and add another running back to that group. You know, he offers something different to the other guys already there. For the Texans, I had absolutely nothing. This guy's called Mr. Burns. That's, that's about it. But then we'll come on to the second pick of the Raiders, who, of course, need a defensive end because for some reason they don't really have a good one. Montez Sweat fills two needs for them. It fills the pass rushing need and it fills the taking fast guys just because they're fast need. Then we have the Eagles, who of course have got a big problem now at quarterback because they're going to need somebody who's going to play over half the season. And that's why I think Dwayne Haskins is a good fit for them. Now you may be surprised at who I think the Colts will take with their pick in the first round. It's me. The, the Colts are going to pick me. Then we come on to the third pick of the Raiders and at this point they're just getting greedy. I mean literally they're going to pick Greedy Williams but then we come on to the Chargers. Now I've seen some smart people suggest that maybe they should pick the quarterback of the future here when he's available uh, because why you know build a team that can actually win a playoff game when you can figure out how you're going to be all right in the future. Now I was supposed to tie this all together by saying that Philip Rivers replaced Drew Brees and now Drew will replace Philip but his name's Paul. I don't, I don't know why he's actually called Drew Lock. I couldn't read into why he's Paul Andrew but yeah his, his birth name's Paul Locke so that, that one's out the window but forget the Chargers we have the Chiefs who have been able to win a playoff game and they did that with a good offense and a terrible defense so you know it would make sense that they try and fix the defense in the draft however there's too many holes there so why bother you can't do it in one round so just add a strength to a strength. Riley Ridley would be a good option there and they can continue to try and score more points than all the other teams which works out a lot of the time. Then with the second to last pick in the first round we have the Los Angeles Rams and I think there's a player that is perfect for them and that is LeBron James. He is draft eligible, he's in the area and he's probably currently thinking about us switching careers so I think this one makes sense for multiple reasons and then we come on to the final pick of the first round and it's the New England Patriots. Now Plenty of drama for the Patriots in this offseason again, but I've been kind of going a little bit too much on them and I want people to understand that I'm not anti-Patriots, so 
Therefore, I won't be making any kind of offhanded comments about them, and I will simply suggest that they pick up a guy who is 5'9", 190 pounds, uh, a position convert, was a running back in high school, a perfect fit for the Patriots. And that is it for my mock draft. Now, come back here when the draft has been, and we will take a look at how many I got correct. I'm expecting it to be almost all of them. And if it's not that exact player, it'll be someone in that position that fills that need because I know exactly what every team in the NFL needs and I know how all of the general managers think. Well, at least I know that about the Browns. John Dorsey loves men who hit women and he can't get enough of them. So Chris Brown to the Browns, very likely to happen. <laughs>